Mains voltage is great. It gives us an unlimited supply of 120 volt, 60 hertz AC voltage, considering that you pay your electric bill, of course. You can directly power devices such as vacuums or light bulbs. However, this voltage is far too high for certain sensitive electronics. For example, anything with a USB port. The same can be said even if you're only using a low 9 volt battery. But how can we get our lower voltage? Sure, we could just use a linear regulator, but that comes with its own problems, such as making sure that you select a proper heat sink so that it doesn't overheat and destroy itself. Not to mention its level of inefficiency, which makes it impractical to run off any sort of battery. There is an alternative to the linear regulator though, and that is known as the buck converter, otherwise known as a step-down DC to DC converter. It can efficiently regulate a high voltage down to a lower one, and in this video, I will tell you how it works and how you could possibly make one of your own. If you have already watched my video on boost converters, a lot of this video will seem similar, just with some key differences that make the regular output a lower voltage instead of a higher one. Anyways, let's review the basic buck converter circuit. We have a switch, a diode, a coil, and a capacitor. Let's start the explanation with all the components discharged in the switch open. Once we close the switch, the voltage source will start charging the inductor, the capacitor, and the load simultaneously. But since the coil will want to oppose the change in current, it will generate a voltage drop so that the other side has a lowered voltage. But this voltage drop will decrease over time until the inductor doesn't have a voltage drop and the circuit runs at full voltage and it acts as if the coil isn't even there. So that's why we have to reopen the switch and allow the inductor and the capacitor to discharge through the load. The diode is in place to allow the inductor to discharge through itself, but not allow the voltage source to short circuit when the switch is closed. This repeated process overall will generate a lowered voltage from the perspective of the load. To get a real world example of a buck converter, I got this LM2576-ADJIC, which is a 3 amp step down regulator. This IC functions as a switch in this type of circuit. Taking a look at figure 7-4 in the datasheet, we can see that it looks a lot like the basic circuit we were just talking about. The only added components are two resistors, which form a resistor divider, that feed into the feedback pin on the IC. But why do we need a feedback pin at all? Well that's because the switch needs to know if it is switching fast or slow enough to generate the correct voltage. Sometimes the load might change and that will change the duty cycle required to keep the voltage stable. So to learn more about how the feedback system works, let's take a look at the IC's block diagram. Starting with the feedback pin, we can see that it directly connects back to the voltage output. Internally, it is connected to a resistor divider. However, since we have the adjustable version here, R2 is only 0 ohms, meaning that we can choose its value externally. Anyways, the voltage from the divider is then compared to a 1.23 volt reference in a differential op-amp configuration. We can call this output difference the error. The error is then put into a comparator along with a 52 kHz ramp oscillator. This is where the duty cycle is determined, since when the error is higher, the duty cycle is higher and vice versa. The output of the comparator is then given to the switch as we described earlier. This feedback circuit allows the IC to basically correct itself when the voltage is too high or too low. Now that we have an example and understand how a buck converter like this should work, let's get to designing one of our own. I will be using a 1N5819 Schottky diode because of its low voltage drop, a 100 microfarad capacitor, a 100 microhenry inductor, and a P-channel IRF5305 MOSFET. We can follow the basic circuit earlier to form the basics of the circuit. Connecting the MOSFET to my function generator, I can manually adjust the duty cycle, and from here we can see that adjusting the duty cycle does indeed lower or increase the output voltage from an input voltage of only 10 volts. However, it would be quite tedious to have to manually adjust the duty cycle every time the load changes, so we will need to design a feedback circuit similar to that of the one found in the LM2576. To start, I will generate a reference voltage of 1.3 volts using this LM385 reference voltage IC. I will then compare the reference to the feedback through a divider and a differential op amp, which in this case is the LM358, which is kind of confusing considering that both of the part names are very similar. Anyways, the output of this op amp is now the error voltage. We can then take the error voltage and put it into the non-inverting input of a comparator. The inverting input is then connected to the 1.3 volt ramp oscillator, meaning that the higher the error, the higher the due cycle will be. At first, I used my function generator to test the ramp oscillator, and the circuit worked as expected, but this was not practical at all, considering that I would have to bring the function generator around to use the circuit. So I decided to make a more permanent solution, 
I solve this by using another pair of op amps to generate the triangle wave, with the voltage divider on its output to ensure that the peak to peak voltage of its output would be suitable for the comparator, 1.23 volts to be exact. All of the op amps I used were LM358s. And finally, the output of the comparator drives the MOSFET and sets the duty cycle. As we can see, the output of the regulator stays stable even when we change the load, and we can also adjust the output voltage by twisting the potentiometer on the feedback voltage divider. Now I know I just mentioned a ton of connections, so if you are still confused about how I got this together, check out the schematic in the description. While the circuit does work here on the breadboard, it kinda goes without saying that its performance would improve if we soldered it together instead of using the loose breadboard connections. So I gathered all the components and got to work soldering together everything on a perf board. It did take a while, but I did get it to work. And as we can see, the converter can regulate from 16 volts all the way down to 5 volts from the 16.4 volt input. So, should you take the time to make your own buck converter? I'd say that depends. If you want to learn more about how a buck converter really works, definitely try making the circuit. However, if you are already comfortable with the ideas discussed in this video, then you probably should just either stick with a pre-made board or a buck converter IC, such as the LM2576. They provide much better performance at a cheaper price and with a smaller and simpler board. Another thing to mention is that you can make the circuit using a microcontroller instead of a switching IC. To learn more about this method, you can check out my boost converter video, because boost and buck converters are very similar. Well anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing so that you can see more of what I make. And have a good one!